Welcome back. In this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to start adding in some simple windows to our project and I'm going to show two different ways of doing this, potentially three. So our first way is we can use click the button and use the add window button and this is going to bring up this here. And what we can do is we can specify the base height, that's the height from the floor, so let's say 1.2 meters. I don't have uh, facade drawings of this project, so I'm going to have to make some assumptions. State the width looks to be about 1.8. That's good enough for me. And the height, so I'm going to set these as being, again, 1.2 meters high. I can add these in. Have a quick look at how that looks. There's our window in. I'm happy with that. And then I could go around the facade, adding these windows in. There looks to be another one of the same size and another one. And these look to be a bit thinner, possibly a 0 0.9. So that's one way. An alternative means of doing this would be to use the add windows and doors in plan mode. Now if I do this, I set the height again, 1.2, and then I set the height of the window frame. Again, I set them at 1.2, and if I was doing this, I can quickly drag and create the windows. Again, this is appropriate, in fact, this is probably more appropriate for drawings like this where we have a similar size window all the way around the facade but it has different widths. And let's just have a look at that in 3D to get an impression. I'm going to keep coming back to this 3D view. Okay, so let's look at another way and what we're going to need to do here is I'm going to introduce you to this level of detail concept or level of drawing. At the moment we are looking at the drawing from the top, as in we can see the whole thing. If I click on any room, there are two buttons at the top here that become more important. And these are move down one level and move up one level. If I move down one level, the rest of the drawing is going to disappear. I'm just talking about that room. Now what I can do from here is actually go down another level and select a wall. And that's what I'm going to be doing now. When I get to this point, my ability to control my window and glazing increases significantly because what I can do is I can draw the windows in. And this can be very useful if you've got, say, uh, multiple windows with some of them opening and some of them closed, or you might have different G values. This can be a useful tool for that. So the final way I want to talk about adding windows is by doing something called algorithmic. Now, algorithmic is a very, very useful tool, particularly if you get into the grips of using it and on buildings where you're early on in the design and you want to come through a lot of iterations. So how does algorithmic work? So I'm going to select everything. and I'm going to edit glazing doors, louvers, and it's going to be presenting me with this box here. Now, I'm going to remove existing glazing for this purposes. I can control what facades are going to have what type of glazing. I can state the tilt if I'm looking at things like um, roof, if I'm looking at glazing on sloped roofs, and I can state how much glazing there's going to be. So, very simply, let's say we apply 50%. I'm going to remove existing glazing here because if you try and do this with glazing existing it just won't run so I apply and we can see that that will have quite a dramatic effect on our building so it's applied 50% glazing to all of our wooden sides at the same time if I change that again and I say use percentage area and height which can be quite useful so now I can state that it's going to be 1.2 meters off the floor and we're going to have a height of again 1.2 and let's drop that down to say 40% apply there 
and we can see that it's done exactly that. And if I wanted to go to the final one, I could again do it. And this time though, I'm looking at X spacing, so spacing up the sides, as well as Y spacing, if they are rows and columns. And finally, if I want to remove everything, We can also, through this, build up algorithms for multiple uh, multiple rows of windows at the same time. So we might be doing several lines that dealt with several different orientations. It can be a very powerful tool um, if you're iterating on designs early in a project. So I'm going to quickly add in my windows again, just checking. Yep, it's changed 1.2, 1.2. I'm going to add in my doors. I've only done the external doors on this model as internal doors within IES aren't actually a major consideration. The reason being is the heat transfer between one internal space to another is fairly marginal, whereas the heat transfer between the interior and the exterior is substantially higher. Doors in particular are an area of major heat loss within buildings or heat ingress due to their low U values in comparison to the rest of the elements. Now let's have a quick look at our building in 3D. And I'm very happy with that. I'm going to conclude this video on windows and doors and I'll see you in the next.